Okay, so now that we have a basic understanding of what atoms are and elements, let's talk about um, isotopes in particular, which is a term that you may have heard before, especially in uh, conjunction with something like um, you know, nuclear fallout and so forth. But let's talk about what this actually means. Well, the first thing we need to know is what the heck is an isotope? Okay, isotopes are atoms of the same element with a different number of neutrons. Okay, it's a slightly different version of the same element. So, for instance, uh, imagine that you walk into a candy store, right? And you look around, you see uh, gumdrops and Swedish fish, Sour Patch Kids and M&M's, Skittles, you know, pretty much anything you can think of. And as you, you know, look around, you have all these different types of candy, okay? Now, this is a lot like different elements, right? You can easily tell the difference between, you know, a, a gumdrop and, I don't know, like a Kit Kat bar, right? because they're very, very different. Just like atoms of different elements are very different. They behave differently when they react chemically. So an oxygen atom and a calcium atom behave very, very differently. Now, um, let's say that you go ahead and you, you get a bag of, of M&Ms. You walk out with them. Hopefully you paid for them. And as you, as you walk out, you close your eyes in delight and you start popping these M&Ms into your mouth. They all taste delicious and chocolatey and, you know, it's wonderful. But when you open your eyes, you look down in your hand and you actually see that these M&Ms are different colors, right? So they taste the same, and yet they are slightly different. So that's a lot like an isotope. So, um, you know, for instance, let's say that we have something like, like carbon. Okay, there are actually three slightly different versions of carbon. And we can write these in different ways. But um, let's go ahead and just write it like this. Okay, so there's carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14. Turns out that carbon-14 is radioactive, so you've probably heard of, uh, you know, carbon dating, not like Match.com, but, uh, you know, this idea of figuring out how old something is based on the number of, or, you know, the ratio of radioactive carbon that's still present. Okay, so there's three different versions of carbon, three different isotopes. You'll notice a couple of things when we look at this, okay? First thing that you should notice is that they all have uh, a certain number in common, right? So this bottom number here is 6, okay? That is the atomic number, or Z, okay? Uh, in German, number is Zoll, and so that's where the, uh, the term Z came from, for atomic number. This is the number of protons, so you'll notice that this carbon has 6, this isotope of carbon has 6, and this isotope of carbon has 6. They all have the exact same number of protons. Because if they had a different number of protons, they would no longer be carbon. They'd be a different element. Okay? But you'll notice that what has changed is this top number, 12, 13, and 14. That's the mass number, sometimes abbreviated A. This is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Okay, so let's see if we can figure this out. So if this carbon has 6 protons and it has a mass number of 12, so 12 minus 6 would be 6, so this one would actually have six neutrons, okay? Number of neutrons would be six in this case. Now how about this one over here? Well, it has a mass number of 13. 13 minus six would be, oh, this one actually has seven neutrons, and then over here, 14 minus six would be eight. So carbon-14 actually has eight neutrons. So same number of protons, different number of neutrons, therefore they have different masses. So let's take a look at this isotope of chlorine over here. How many protons does it have? 17, right? Because it's atomic number 17. It's written right down here in the bottom left-hand corner. How many neutrons does it have? Well, it's not 35 because this is protons plus neutrons. So if the mass number is 35, if we subtract out uh, the 17 protons, the remaining 18 must be the number of neutrons. So this has 18 neutrons. All right. So let's try doing this in a more formal manner. All right, let's look at um, the three isotopes of neon. Not all elements have three isotopes, but um, neon does. Notice that I've also gone ahead and uh, given you the, the atomic abundance of each of these, right? So um, scientists have studied this. They've looked at different uh, um, samples of neon, and they've run this through what's called a mass spectrometer. And they found that 90% of the neon um, on Earth is in the form of neon-20. 
about 9% is in the form of neon 22, and there's a tiny fraction of a percent, a quarter of a percent, that's in the form of neon 21. Now, that doesn't really matter for our purposes here, but that's going to come in handy a little later on. So, um, first off, how many protons does this have? Well, notice that this is written a little differently than we had it written before, right? Before, we had written it as neon. The 20 is the mass number, which would go up in the top left-hand corner. How do we figure out the atomic number if it's not given to us? Well, we just pull out our periodic table. So in this case, if I look at my trusty periodic table that I carry in my wallet, just like I'm sure you all do, uh, I find out that it has an atomic number of 10. So if it makes you feel better, you could write each of these like this, 21, 10, and neon, 22, 10. So just remember that this number that's written here is the mass number. The atomic number you'd have to look up yourself if it's not already given to you. Okay, so what's the next step? Number of protons. Remember that atomic number, or number of protons, or Z, is this number right here. So, 10 protons. Oh, they all have 10 protons, right? Because they're all um, neon. If they had a different number of protons, they would be a different element. Now, what about the number of neutrons? This can vary because they are different isotopes. So in this case, notice that we have a mass number of 20. 10 of those are, um, are neon. <laughs> Sorry, messed up there. Uh, okay, so 20, mass number of 20, 10 of those are uh, protons, which means the remaining 10 are neutrons. All right, how about over here? 21 minus 10 would be 11, so we have 11 neutrons. 22 minus 10 would be 12 neutrons. Now, what about the number of electrons? Well, notice that all of these are neutral. Okay, If they weren't neutral, they would have a charge in the top right-hand corner, a plus or minus charge, but they're all neutral, which means that they must have equal number of protons and electrons to be electrically neutral, because remember that protons are plus one, electrons are minus one. So 10 protons means 10 electrons. 10 protons means 10 electrons. 10 protons means 10 electrons. All right, not so bad. Okay, so now that we've been able to figure out the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons in an isotope, let's go ahead and look at something that's known as the atomic weight. All right, so what is atomic weight? Well, it's actually a weighted average of the masses of the naturally occurring isotopes of an element. So if you look at your periodic table, we've got carbon here, and remember that this number up here at the top is the atomic number, Z, right? So that's the number of protons. Uh, this down here, this 12.01, that is the atomic weight or the atomic mass. And notice that it's kind of a weird number, 12.01. Well, why isn't it just a perfect even 12 or 13 or 14? Well, it's because it's a, a weighted average. So remember that we have carbon 12, carbon 13, and carbon 14. And the weight of carbon-12 is approximately 12 AMUs. The weight of 13 is approximately 13 AMUs. The weight of carbon-14 is approximately 14 AMUs. So if we're going to average these three, shouldn't the average come out to be about 13? Well, if we're doing a, a regular average, it would. But we're not doing a regular average. We're doing a weighted average. And it turns out that the vast, vast majority of the uh, carbon in the universe or at least on Earth, is in the form of carbon-12. So about 98, 99% of all carbon is carbon-12, which means that when we uh, do the weighted average, the number comes out very, very close to uh, 12. So 12.01, just because we have a little bit of this and a little bit of this to add into the mix there. All right, so let me give you an example of this and see if it, if it helps a little bit. All right, so... Uh, what if I asked you how many leaves are on the typical clover? All right, so you walk out in your yard and you see a nice little clover, and it looks something like this, right? That's a horrible drawing, but it typically has three leaves, right? All right, but have you ever seen a four-leaf clover? Okay, every now and then you can find one. I found one a while back, and when I walked back to my mailbox, I found a check for $300 sitting in the mailbox, which means that they're obviously very lucky because they have four leaves, right? Or it could just be us waiting for a check. But anyway, um, there are actually scientists that study the frequency of the occurrence of four-leaf clovers. You thought your job was boring, right? 
And it turns out that if you have like a square meter of just a big patch of clover, uh, that you'd actually have about two four-leaf clovers on average. So they're, you know, they're not common, but they're not insanely rare either. Now, have you ever seen a five-leaf clover? Okay, I have, just once in my life. Uh, when I was about 10 years old, uh, I was, uh, you know, about to climb into the car. I looked down at my feet, and lo and behold, a five-leaf clover. And I, I turned to my dad, and I said, Hey, Dad, if a four-leaf clover gives you good luck, and a what does a five-leaf clover give you? And he said, cancer. <laughs> and so I dropped it, ran away, because I didn't want to get cancer, and I wish I had kept it. But anyway, uh, so if we're talking about um, the average number of leaves on a clover, what would the average be? Well, could you just do 3 plus 4 plus 5, which turns out to be 12, and divide by 3? So that would tell you that the average number of leaves on a clover is 4. No, that wouldn't make any sense because if you walk outside, the vast majority of clovers that you see are going to have three leaves. And so the average should be approximately three, but maybe 3.01 or something like that to take into account that there are a few uh, you know, genetic X-Men out there of four-leaf clovers and five-leaf clovers. So we can actually calculate this uh, when we are talking about an actual um, atom because we'll have some numbers that we can work with. Okay, so if we want to determine the, uh, the weighted average of this atomic weight, we're going to do a couple steps. First thing we're going to do is we're going to pull some information from you know, a textbook or a problem that you might see. We're going to need a couple of things. We're going to need the isotopes, each one. We need, we need the mass of each one, and we need the percent abundance in nature. So again, that information is all typically given to you in the problem. Now the next thing we're going to do is the abundances will typically be in percentages, right? But we don't want percentages. We actually want uh, decimals. So if 90% of um, you know, an element is in the form of a, a certain isotope, well, we want to go ahead and divide that by 100. So we're going to divide this by 100, or in other words, just move the decimal place two points. We're going to say that this is a 0.90. Okay. Then the next step we're going to do is we're actually going to multiply the mass by each abundance. Okay? So the mass multiplied by the abundance for each isotope, and then we're just going to add up all of those products. So let's actually try using some real numbers, and we're going to calculate the um, atomic weight for everyone's favorite element, chlorine. Alright, so um, chlorine has two isotopes, chlorine 35, chlorine 37. And I'm going to give you this information. I give you the mass of each of the two isotopes as well as the isotopic abundance of each of the two isotopes. All right, so all of this information is given. Your job is to actually calculate this thing. So what's the first thing we should do? Well, we should probably convert each of these um, abundances into a decimal. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that by dividing by 100, or in other words, um, multiplying, or sorry, uh, moving the decimal two places to the left, so 0 0.7578. Um, All right, down here we have 0 0.2422. All right, so that's the first step, is to go ahead and um, convert each of those decimals, or each of those percentages into decimals. The next step would be simply to multiply each of these together, okay? And, sorry about that, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and multiply. So I'm just typing in 34.97 times 0.7578. This comes out to be about 26.50. Okay, let's try the next one. 36.97 times point two four two two. So if you plug those in, you get approximately eight point nine five. Okay, what's the last step? I just take these two numbers here and all I have to do is add them together. Alright, so eight point nine five plus twenty six point five zero comes out to thirty five 
0.45 AMUs, or atomic mass units. So if you look at your periodic table, you'd see that chlorine has an average atomic weight of 35.45 AMUs. Now, this is a relatively simple one because we only have you know, two isotopes of chlorine. If we had you know, five isotopes, we'd do the exact same process. We just have to take you know, the mass times the isotopic abundance and multiply them you know, five separate times and then add up all five of the numbers in order to get the final answer. Okay? Now, one thing I do want to mention because this often trips people up is they think, oh, this is an average, so I need to take this number down here and divide by two because there are two isotopes. No, do not do that, okay? Uh, do not do anything other than just add up the numbers in the box here, right? So take the mass times the isotopic abundance in the form of a decimal, multiply those together for each of the isotopes, and then simply add them up, and you are done. Now that we've made it through isotopes, uh, let me give you a quick example of how um, we can actually take two things and merge them into one, just like we would take uh, you know, two or three or four isotopes and do a weighted average to combine those into a single um, uh, you know, an average atomic weight that we can put on a periodic table. So here, you can see that we actually have uh, two ropes, right? Okay, one and two. And what we can do, though, is, you know, there's nothing in my hands, and I can go ahead and, um, you know, make a fist, and if I pull on the rope, on each end of the two ropes, if I had more than two hands, this would be a lot easier if I had an assistant. Um, turns out that this turns into exactly one rope, right? Just like we can average things together and make a single average atomic weight.